we're going to move into the Q&A session. So before we start, I'm just going to pass the microphone over to the panel so that they can introduce themselves. Good evening, everyone. My name is John Goddard. I am the Supervising Solicitor of the Residential Advisory Service, or RAS, as we like to call ourselves. We've been up and running since the 16th of May 2013. We've had more than 10,000 Canterbury homeowners call our contact centre. <clears throat> We've opened almost 2,600 cases, closed 1,800. We've got between 750 to 800 cases on our books at the moment. The legal side of RAS is delivered by Community Law Canterbury, and our offices are on Montreal Street down the south city end. Currently, we employ 11 solicitors, one legal researcher, and five legal interns. As well as that, we have a technical panel, which is run by MB. We have three engineering firms on the panel, ACOM, Oricon, and Opus, and one firm of quantity surveyors, and they have processed over 200 technical reviews to date. Um, so we have free legal advice, free technical advice, and other services on top of that. We have an extremely close relationship with Southern Response, but we are independent from them, and we have worked on a number of Southern Response cases, helping homeowners to negotiate settlements with Southern Response. Thank you. I'll pass over to Nathan. Hi, I'm Nathan Moncrief. I'm here representing CTES and the Earthquake Support Coordination Service, both of which were set up after the September quake. Uh, CTES is the Canterbury Earthquake Temporary Accommodation Service. There are three parts to that, the first being the matching and placement team. They'll help you find temporary accommodation when you are out of your house for repairs or the rebuild. Uh, they'll also... So they're responsible for the temporary villages around Christchurch at the moment, and they'll also help you find private rentals if that's the case. Uh, the second part to our service is the temporary accommodation assistance team, and that's the financial help that kicks in once your insurance accommodation money runs out. So if you're eligible for that, they'll kick that in once your insurance accommodation money runs out. The third part to CTAS is earthquake support coordination. So with the Earthquake Support Coordinator Service, it's a partnership between government and non-government groups. We're all impartial. The entire service is free. We'll happily sit down with you, listen to what's happening, work out a way forward with you. So make a plan as to what you can do next. If we can't help, we will point you towards groups that can help. So RAS and other groups like that. Okay. Good evening everyone, my name is Victoria Witter and I'm the Director of Red Quantity Surveying. You may have heard of us, Quantity Surveyors, we've sort of raised our heads in the last few years. We are the specialists when it comes to costs regarding construction. So Red Quantity Surveying provides quantity surveying services to the builders in Christchurch across Canterbury and we also provide services directly to homeowners for independent review, especially at the moment of cash settlements. So. We've got a team of 10, we're based in Opawa, and um, we're completely independent. Great, thank you. So we're going to pass the microphone over to Tanya. Tanya is going to start at the back rows and moving forward. And again, I just remind you, please just ask one question, and then if you do have any more, somebody else might ask that question, or you can also speak afterwards uh, individually to our panel and our speakers. So we will start with our first question. Yes, sir. Um, can you tell me, um, before you said that uh, you worked the MBIE guidelines uh, and the overall structure is brought under the umbrella of the current building code, can you tell uh, me and other people here if there are cases where the MBIE guidelines clash with the building code? And what... what what one takes precedence? At, for all the repairs, um, there are designers and engineers that um, set the specifications for, your, for the repairs or the rebuild, and they, take, um, they are written in guidance with the MBIE guidelines. But an engineer's specification will, will overall, um, and the MBIE guidelines, let's say we're saying all those defects, that fills the gaps that aren't filled in by the New Zealand standards or the um, contract specifications. 
Um, I think you've got more of a specific question, but you can come see me later if you like, and we might be able to help you out there. That's a very challenging question. The thing to understand about the MB guidelines is that they are one way of persuading consenting authorities that building work will be sufficient to comply with the building code um, under the Building Act. But to be used appropriately, they need to be accompanied by site-specific assessments and engineering judgment needs to be applied. And that's what really convinces city councils that building work is going to comply with the Building Act, which is their responsibility. Having said that, um, whether or not a proposed repair meets the standard in the policy is a different question. And so different information needs to be considered to assess whether or not that is indeed the case. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Thank you. My question relates to, I guess, a shared repair within a body corporate setting. I've been told by two Southern Response claims specialists that only 75% of the homeowners need to agree, agree on a repair strategy for it to go ahead. Um, and I understand that this is the case under the new Unit Titles Act. However, my understanding also is that at February 22nd, 2011, the previous Act was still in place and that under these rules it is a requirement for all owners to agree 100%. So I just wondered if anyone could comment on that. I've been speaking to an insurance broker today who was involved in the, or has knowledge about what happened at the Cramner Courts and he said that at the time all 100% of the owners had to agree. So I'm just wondering if anyone has any information about that. Is it John, please. It's really <coughs> legal questions. Um, body corporate issues can be quite complex and as important as you've correctly identified, there are two acts, the 1952 Act and the 2010 Act. And the first thing to establish that for a particular claim, which Act applies, um, in terms of matters which are being dealt with at the moment, the 2010 Act will apply, and that Act has some pretty sparse provisions in terms of body corporate rules, but body corporates are expected to develop their own rules, so body corporates are afforded greater flexibility, and it's going to be a combination of the Act and those rules that determine how particular matters are to be resolved.